The second part of our review for peripheral nerve disorders has been divided into two, and actually there will be a third part to this review, which will include peripheral nerve tumors. Thank you. All that aside, I'd like now to say a few words about nerve tumors and help you uh, distinguish benign from malignant and helpful localizing some of these. Now, as I've mentioned, imaging is very important, especially on your boards. And I would just tell you one hint. Any area that you can localize producing focal pain in an unusual site or that causes radiating paresthesias that's not the carpal tunnel or the cubital tunnel, for example, should be imaged. So for example, if somebody had a perineal nerve type palsy, I would percuss along the nerve. If there was no trauma, then I'm thinking about an entrapment of the fibular neck. If, however, the patient localized to the thigh rather than the fibular neck, then I want to make sure the thigh is part of the imaging. So for example, if a patient told you they had a foot drop, you examine them, they have a sciatic neuropathy. Part of their history was when they sit, their symptoms are provoked, then I want to make sure that I test their buttock by provoking that as a pain trigger. I want to do a Tinel sign there. I want to do various hip motions. And eventually, I want to image them. And lo and behold, I bet they have a mass in their product region where they're finding or telling you about a Tinel's type sign. Any mass associated with a nerve that is detected on your clinical exam should be imaged. Assuming everything is a lipoma or a lymph node or a ganglion cyst when they're in unusual uh, spots, there's a shortcoming. I'll just leave it at that. I would get some MRI or even an ultrasound. Now, a basic fact that really is simple, that is really not uh, harped on loudly enough, is the fact that most, almost all, benign nerve sheath tumors present with some neurologic symptoms, but without deficit. Let's say that the opposite way. It's exceedingly rare for a patient with a benign nerve sheath tumor, that's a classic nerve sheath tumor, that that patient would have a deficit of weakness at the time of onset. That's very important. So if you have a patient with symptoms but with a normal exam and you image them and you review it with the radiologist and they say it's a nerve sheath tumor, then you're down to schwannoma or nerve fibroma. Then you need to think about syndromes. If there's no syndrome and it's solitary, then it's usually a schwannoma almost always. And that patient has a very good outcome with surgery if that's necessary. Now let's distinguish that from somebody who presents with neurologic symptoms and neurologic deficit. That would be rare for a benign nerve sheath tumor. It would not be rare for a malignancy. So most commonly would be a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, but it could also be metastatic or perineural spread. It could be an extraneural malignancy like a sarcoma pressing on the nerve. These patients should have more pain. They might have systemic illness. They would have progressive rapid deficits, a mass, and an ugly looking MRI scan, typically. So I think the history and the physical exam are very important in your getting between the benign nerve sheath tumor and the malignant one. All you have to do is ask the radiologist, was it a benign nerve sheath tumor? That's as far as they'll probably get, because after that, if it's regular, it's probably benign. If it's sort of a little bit inhomogeneous or not quite perfectly round then, and larger, then it might be a malignancy. Where things get a little bit complicated, but I think are really quite clear, are there are rare lesions that are benign lesions, but they're not benign nerve sheath tumors. There is a lesion that I've been particularly interested in called an intraneural ganglion cyst where there's cyst fluid in the nerve that causes a mass. The difference is, is this signals like cyst. I'll show you a case because I think this is testable. 
I think it's important because there's now a surgical treatment that could be directed and cured.